Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. Today we've got a really exciting week, so let's get right into it. This week we've got new motion blur bundles, a few interesting new examples, and some great looking games and visualizations. One especially exciting thing this week is the Bevy Foundation has reached an exciting milestone in enabling Alice to start full time on May 1st. This is not the end of the road in funding, but rather it is the beginning of the beginning of the short term plans outlined in the Foundation announcement and is generally a good sign for the beginning of what I hope is a substantial future for Bevy, in my opinion. If you want to see Bevy succeed like I do and you can afford to, you can donate to Bevy today at bevyengine.org slash donate. And getting into our overview, new support for per object motion blur was added to the core 3D pipeline. This is a post-processing effect that uses the depth and motion vector buffers and can be enabled by adding the motion blur bundle to the camera entity. And of course, there's also a brand new example in the same PR showcasing this new motion blur effect. You can follow the car from behind as it goes around the track, or you can view it from the side, which in my opinion shows off the motion blur a little bit better. Next up, we've got a new animation example. The question, how do you run animations in response to user input is answered by this PR. This new example shows off a number of useful Bevy and Rust language features, including single use timers, generics and systems, sprite sheet animation with texture atlases, and run conditions for systems that run in response to user input. Even if you're not particularly interested in animation, this is a great example to go check out for these various reasons. In 10.973, gizmos now work in fixed update, as you probably would have expected they would before. This marks a change away from being a purely immediate mode implementation, although now gizmos will work as expected, even in schedules that don't run every frame and can be implemented for custom schedules. And 13.059 is a really interesting one in my opinion. Documentation rendering can be affected by seemingly innocuous code, such as this PR, which brings the expected documentation from the Bevy Reflect standalone crate, as you can see here, into the Bevy Reflect submodule documentation in the monolithic Bevy crate. All of the pros that is in the standalone crate should show up here as well, and now it does. The internal, that is not user-facing, module exports changed from PubMod Foo to PubUse Bevy Foo. 13022 makes app exit more specific about the exit reason. And if you click into the changed files, you'll find out that app exit is now an enum with variance success and error, which is a non-zero U8. The experimental meshlets feature got a new basic level of detail system this week. Level of detail typically refers to the ability to render more or less detail in objects that are closer or further away from the camera. There's some really useful comments and references on the PR here. So definitely check it out if you're interested in diving deeper into the work. And of course, there's also a couple screenshots because where would a rendering PR be without screenshots? If you're interested in following Meshlets as it develops, remember it is behind an experimental flag, you can follow the Meshlet tracking issue, which is issue 11518. Grid track and repeated grid track gained the ability to be defined in viewport based dimensions. That is Vmin, Vmax, Vh, and Vw. These define sizes as percentages of the viewport in different ways. In 13046, we got a new example for button input with key code mouse button and gamepad buttons. The examples also include checking multi key combinations. Event Reader now supports parallel iteration using Event Reader par read. This matches the Event Reader read that you would have typically already been using. And 13067 exposes a couple of mutable animation clip functions. This allows Bevy to modify animation clips via code. And of course, we saw it already a little bit this week. Alice's weekly merge train is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need more work. And that kicks off the showcases with some flight simulation using Rapier 3D and realistic forces. The Discord thread for this one includes a few people building flight sim tech, including some links to build this yourself if you want to. This next showcase shows client lobbies, a work in progress of a networking example with Lightyear where the client and server configurations, i.e. the network topology, can be freely modified at runtime. A dedicated server that maintains a list of lobbies, clients can join lobbies and start a game. This showcase is really interesting. It uses Bevy and a Quest 3 to control an RSC car for the author's master's thesis. This mixed reality RSC car actually looks pretty fun to play with. <laughs> Next up, this page is generated by a repo that hacks together the Rust doc JSON to show documentation in a more Bevy specific way, such as components and when they're being used. The author is looking for feedback on this one, 
So if you find the visualization useful, be sure to let them know. You can see here at the top, it lists all of our components, modules, and components and how they're queried in various systems. Down at the bottom, we also have our resources. This demo is some world space TTF and SVG rendering, that is fonts and SVGs, turning TTF font files and SVGs into a mesh and rendering them using the normal pipeline. Up next, we've got a bump mapping demo for Bevy mesh terrain integration. In this demo, you can see the sun moving over the bump map terrain, which looks quite nice. The next demo uses Bevy Reactor to render nodes and pipes. Bevy Reactor is a fine-grained reactivity crate for Bevy. The data in these nodes is fake, but the controls are real. The splines between the nodes are being drawn with a custom shader that computes SDFs for quadratic curves and stores the control points in a storage buffer. This repo, Rust Magic Patterns, contains a number of visualizations. In this case, it's a blog post on the Rust Stream API. And if you scroll down, you can see visualizations that were generated with Bevy for this post. There's a couple of them in the post, and I really enjoy seeing these kinds of visualizations inside of blog posts, so I hope to see more of them in the future. This next showcase is hard to tell from just an image. Prismic is a federated and open source social VR sandbox, and this is a climbing game demo using its scripting system. It is, as I just mentioned, best seen in video form or played. So check it out in the thread or go see the source code. Speaking of meshlets, this is a screenshot from the in-progress meshlets feature with an important new optimization applied. This demo is now getting 170 FPS up from about 45 for rendering this scene with not necessarily visible in all cases, but 446 million triangles. This is the use case that meshlets targets so it's super exciting to see this. And oh wow, isn't Bevy looking beautiful today? This uses an environment map light, a skybox, and point lights stuck inside these green balls to make up this demo. Oh, and um, also the 3.57 million triangle gun mesh. Could use a little bit of optimization in the future. <laughs> the shadow casting is off and there are about 14 lights here. The demo also makes use of assets from the Bevy dev crate. Our next showcase is actually a web app communicating between the front end and the quote back end, which is Bevy, via events in Wasm Bungen. And I'm a huge fan of implementing old games, especially to learn new concepts that you would like to get used to. This implementation of the classic Asteroids game uses gizmos for the visuals. It's playable on itch.io as you can see here, and the source code is available on GitHub. Voxels are ever popular. This showcases almost an entire rewrite of the system used before this to store chunks, generate chunks, and the entity system. This rewrite is intended to be much more modular than it was before, and the video here is a test to make sure that the chunk data is correct. And of course it is. This next showcase implements a tile grammar for terrain generation. The grammar is generated from an input, in this case, grammar underscore tiles in the video here. And you can see the output tile map on the bottom and the result of the terrain generation on the left here. And B-I-N-G-O, this is a bingo game built in about three days using a server client model and the quick protocol. The networking implementation for that is provided by Bevy Quinet. If you don't know what you're looking at here, it could be a little bit confusing. This is a visualization of an algorithm for Morton range tests. But stay with me. The visualization is an interesting case of not much research being available so the visualization was actually needed to verify that this algorithm and the behavior made sense. The goal is to publish this as an alternative to Bevy Spatial, which is a crate for tracking entities in spatial indices. Make the Hero was a game previously featured as a demo for Bevy Flurks and has received some great improvements to the readability of the gameplay. Merge tiles to construct the number, then move on to the next level. Unless you're talking and playing at the same time, in which case I can't do math and I didn't pass the level. <laughs> but moving on from real-time math to ray tracing. This ray tracing demo has a very cool debug statistics overlay powered by Apple's Metal Performance HUD. This is documented on Apple's site, and I've included the link in the issue this week. Next up, we've got this very visual quantizer. Audio is pretty much required for this one, although I'm not going to include it in the video, so be sure to click through and check it out. The source for this one is also available on GitHub. Next up, we've got the classic Minesweeper. This demo showcases the classic game Minesweeper on a Voronoi grid and potentially other grid types in the future. This 3D model was made using SDF modeling software built inside of Bevy. It was colored using Paint 3D on Windows. 
To build a home is a mix of The Sims and Dwarf Fortress, so you choose your own adventure. To build a home gets a new house, new objects and sprites, and a new character model in the showcase this week. There's a Steam page up to wishlist this if you're into this kind of game. And here we've got some pixelization effects with a toon shader. This demo contains the pixelization effect on the camera achieved through scaling up a low-res render, as well as a toon shader with colors that are converted to LCH before being quantized so the lightness between different hues matches. The toon shader includes normal-based and depth-based outlines. And this one, of course, is also open source on GitHub. Although I will note it's just a demo at the moment, so don't expect to be able to install this plugin into your own game, but you could use it as a reference. And this Animal Crossing inspired game got a number of different updates this week. This one is called the Shrine Update, but there were also updates for Slimes in their first iteration, as well as Wobbly Ground and Hit Feedback. Links to all of the posts are on the site. And that's it for the showcases. We're going to get into the crate releases now, starting off with Bevy iOS notifications. Extra Worst is on a bit of a roll here with their third iOS crate in the last two weeks. And that is Bevy iOS Notifications, which is a Rust crate and Swift package to easily integrate iOS's native notification API into a Bevy application. Just look at that push notification. Next up, we've got Bevy Input Sequence 0.4. Bevy Input Sequence recognizes input sequences from keyboard and gamepads. In 0.4, you can now run one-shot systems in response to an input sequence, and there are now more examples in the repo. Bevy RTS Camera 0.5 came out and added the ability to pan the camera around by grabbing the ground with the cursor. And last but not least, a new Ace Sprite binary loader for Bevy, featuring hot reloading from binary files for animations, compatibility with Bevy UI, and support for one-shot animations by providing events when animations finish or loop. A Sprite is a great piece of software, so I'm hoping this crate sticks around for the long haul. And in our only devlog this week, we've got the making of Glow and its release on Steam. Glow is a game we covered last week, which you can see here on its Steam page. This video covers the author's first game released, which is Glow, and gives a bunch of context about the game. And for the only video in the educational section this week, We've got this video on one-shot systems. Take 10 minutes of your day and learn about one-shot systems and use them in your Bevy apps. That's it for entries this week. We've already covered the pull requests that were merged this week in the overview, although we do have the full list on the website. And of course, if you're looking to contribute, there are all of the pull requests that were open this week that need some review. This can be as easy as running the application locally and reporting your experience. Or maybe you're looking for something a little bit more in-depth. In that case, we have all the issues that were open this week as well. These might require some investigation, but some of them are as simple as adding some documentation. So that's it for this week. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next one.